when you start to look at who's going to be taxed, about half of all small business income will be taxed under the president's proposal. These are the very people that we expect uh, to invest in the economy and to begin creating jobs. Why would we want to punish them? The job creators, the small businesses in this uh, country, they're suggesting their taxes go up. We've got to begin to take those kinds of steps, put the federal government on a diet, and reflect the fact that that's what most people in America have been, America have been doing over the last couple of years. It's time for government to live within its means. Point taken. If but, Senator, my have, question is, but my question is, how do you debate? pay for an extension of tax cuts? Because if you're concerned, as Republicans say they are, about cutting spending and the deficit, you have to acknowledge that tax cuts are not paid for. Well, what, 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 what are you talking about? Pay for um, The pure economics case for saying if you're going to do uh, extend the tax cuts that there's really no point in extending it at the top end. Uh, is that people making more than 250,000 a year uh, are the least likely to face those kinds of constraints. So you really should think of this as not being about people who earn more than 250,000 a year. It should be people who are making more than two million a year. Bill O'Reilly, he makes a modest 20 million dollars a year from his gig on Fox, and that means that the Bush tax cuts give him not quite seven figures merely $914,000 a year of extra cash. It's easy to see why Bill Riley wants to see the Bush tax cuts extended. I would point out that in the last 25 years, 80% of all new income created in this country went to the top 1%. And the 1% in our country today earns about 23.5% of all income, while the middle class has collapsed. So to my mind, to ask the middle class and working families to take cuts or to pay more in taxes makes not a whole lot of sense at all. Uh, the other thing to note, Jeff, is that uh, when Republicans and others who don't want to go back to the Clinton tax rates uh, talk about small businesses, they fail to uh, acknowledge that most of the uh, really very wealthy small businesses, the ones that, that are earning a lot of money, uh, those are really individuals. They are investment bankers or they are doctors or lawyers who have uh, registered themselves and uh, they talk about themselves and they also file income taxes as if they're businesses, uh, and that's good for them in terms of their tax rate, but they don't generate a lot of jobs. These are not mom-and-pop stores or mom-and-pop factories. Uh, these are uh, very high-paid professionals. Newsweek says that Sean Hannity, this man of the people, makes $22 million a year from his act on Fox, and that means that the Bush tax cuts mean an extra $1 million dollars. One million dollars for Sean Hannity. But if you use the CBO Congressional Budget Office estimates of the bang for the buck, if I remember the figures correctly, 13 billion dollars in state fiscal relief injects more in terms of economic growth and job creation into the economy than 40 billion dollars in tax cuts for people at the top of the income scale. Uh, so that would be a logical thing to do. The, f the last thing we should do is allow a tax increase uh, on uh, job creators in this country to take effect in January. Well, Bob, I think uh, raising taxes uh, in, a, in a very weak economy is a really, really bad idea, and most economists would agree with that. If you were setting out to devise a stimulus uh, for this economy, it would look nothing like the Bush tax cuts. It's, it's a completely crazy setup. So, so Obviously, obviously, there are much better ways to use this. And if we had the political ability to, to, uh, to actually have an intelligent response, we'd get rid of those cuts and, uh, and have a, a, a large raft of other programs, some of them taking the form of tax cuts, some of them transfer payments, and a lot of just plain spending. Uh, and I just think that if we're going to extend the tax cuts for some Americans, why don't we extend these tax, current tax rates to all Americans and, and get rid of some of the uncertainty that's out there so that small businesses can plan and reinvest in, a, in their business and the new economy. And now Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin has made $14 million this year from cashing in on her fame. In fact, she has done a better job of turning fame into cash than anyone in American history. $14 million. So she wants the Bush tax cuts extended so that she can make an extra cool $638,000. 
But people at the very top, uh, they tend to save much more of their income than people in the middle. Uh, they don't spend nearly as much. Uh, therefore, there's not much bang for the buck in terms of giving them an unwarranted and unexpected extension of the Bush tax cuts. The Bush tax cuts for the rich have been found to be the single least effective way to create jobs. According to the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, $40 billion in aid to the states would create two to three times as many jobs as the cuts. $40 billion in unemployment benefits, at least three times as many jobs. $40 billion in tax credits for every person companies hire, at least four times as many jobs. The Congressional Budget Office itself has done an analysis of 11 different programs, ways you can stimulate job growth. Retaining the Bush tax cuts for the top 2% is number 11 on the list in terms of effectiveness. It's not as effective as giving grants to state and local governments. It's not as effective as unemployment compensation. It's not as effective as a temporary payroll tax reduction targeted at employment or spending on infrastructure. So by all means, we have to worry about the jobs deficit next year. The question I have for you is, what about all that? You know, you all talk about the middle class, but the middle class, we've seen their incomes stagnant, whereas the huge amount of wealth has been accumulated by a very, very small top percent. It's not fair, is it? In 1980, the top 1% of Americans earned wages of about $110,000 a year. By 1990, after about 10 years of Reaganomics, boing, the top 1% had seen their wages rise by 80%. Trickle-down economics, though, right? What's good for the rich is good for all of us, right? Not quite. Here's the average wages of the rest of the country in 1980, and here's what happened for the rest of the country after about 10 years of Reaganomics. Flat. A whopping 3% rise in wages in 10 years. The richest people see their fortunes go up like the Matterhorn. Everybody else, feh, nothing. Today, the Wall Street executives, the crooks on Wall Street, whose actions resulted in the severe recession that we are in right now. The people who have, whose actions, illegal actions, reckless actions, have resulted in millions of Americans losing their jobs, their homes, their savings. Guess what? After we bailed them out, the CEOs today are now earning more money than they did before the bailout. But Senator, this administration is extraordinarily anti-business. According to the Commerce Department, between July and September this year, American businesses earned profits at an annual rate of a trillion six hundred and sixty billion. In fact, profits have been up every quarter beginning after 2008. That means big bonuses, happy shareholders, and still no new jobs. But I think that people at the high end, people like myself, should be paying a lot more in taxes. We have it better than we've ever had it. It's not fair, is it? Well, look, is it? look what, what's not fair is the idea that uh, at, at a time when tens of millions of Americans are unemployed or underemployed, that you would actually allow a tax increase uh, on job creators, a tax increase on their employees. Profits have been up every quarter beginning after 2008. That means big bonuses, happy shareholders, and still no new jobs. I don't know anybody back in Indiana in the city or on the farm who thinks that raising taxes on their small business owner boss is going to put them back to work or get them back to full time. Big bonuses, happy shareholders, and still no new jobs. We've got one yes. uh, time two years after seconds. the crisis on Wall Street. Uh, it has been announced that bonuses this year will be 144 billion, the highest in history. That's who's going to get this tax cut on the uh, top, you know, uh, three per, uh, two percent of the population. They don't need a tax cut. They don't deserve it. And therefore, what we have to do is focus on Main Street, and that means getting our house in order fiscally, not tax cuts that we can't afford. We're going to have to prioritize. Mm -hmm. They had a chance to cut spending for eight years, and Bush didn't veto a single spending bill. What do you say to those two million Americans who are about to lose their unemployment benefits uh, after 99 weeks, uh, and they're about to, to go cold turkey, if you will, and they're not going to get any more help? You know, Republicans have never been opposed to giving more uh, help to those who need it. Uh, we believe in a safety net for those who need it. Uh, we do not, however, support the continued extension of benefits uh, without having some ability to pay for them. Now, in the midst of all of this growing income and wealth inequality in this country, we are now faced with the issue of what we do with the Bush tax cuts of 2001 and 2003. And if you can believe it, 
We have people here, many of my Republican colleagues, who tell us, oh, I am so concerned about our record-breaking deficit. I am terribly concerned about a $13.7 trillion national debt, terribly concerned about the debt that we're going to be leaving to our kids and our grandchildren. But wait a minute. It's very important that we give over a 10-year period $700 billion in tax breaks to the top 2%. If they say you have to keep those tax cuts even on the very wealthy because that is what uh, energizes business and, and capitalism. The rich are always going to say that, you know, that just give us more money and we'll go out and spend more and then it'll all trickle down to the rest of you. But that has not worked the last uh, 10 years and, and uh, I hope the American public is catching on. Here's Glenn Beck. According to Newsweek, Glenn Beck makes $33 million a year as a pundit. And extending the Bush tax cuts means a cool $1.5 million. The CBO senator this week made it very clear that the long-term picture for the economy, for the deficit, is very dark if you extend the Bush-era tax cuts without somehow paying for them. And Bush didn't veto a single spending bill. They had a chance to cut entitlements, and what did they do? Nothing. They added Part D drug uh, benefits, as you know, the largest entitlement expansion since the 60s. Senator, we with respect, freeze. you're being unresponsive to a question, which is, are tax cuts well, paid for going forward, or is it borrowed money at a time when you and other Republican leaders say we must get serious <laughs> about the deficit? It's a straightforward question. Uh, the new poll, 53% favor the middle class tax cut only, 67% against extending tax cuts for the wealthy, including the 14% that thinks all Bush tax cuts should expire. Not even a majority of Republicans polled favor extending the Bush tax cuts for the rich. You know, this goes back to sort of what I believe was the message out of November 2nd election, Wolf, and that is we've got to stop spending money we don't have. For a final time, I'll go back to my question, which is the extension of the tax cuts would cost two point. Uh, 3.2 trillion dollars. That's borrowed money that adds to the deficit. Do you have a plan to pay for that extension? You're talking about current tax policy. Why did it all of a sudden be, uh, become something that we quote uh, uh, paid for? So what are they talking about when they say no tax cuts? That is just phony baloney. Excuse me for interrupting. I was just thinking mm -hmm. but even so though uh, even though the argument for, that we hear often is that among those top earners are small businessmen and women who create jobs. Well, unfortunately, that is a very misleading statement.